Okay, welcome back to a new uh, physics tutorial, or in this case, I would say it's again more related to mathematics, but uh, since both of these subjects are interconnected, I think it's also quite instructive to uh, to go through these topics. Yeah? And uh, now in this video, I would like to explain how you can calculate the slope of a parabola without using any differential calculus. Yeah? And this is something which is not uh, often t uh, taught in school yeah? because there directly you, un you learn how to calculate derivatives of functions and then you can actually directly uh, calculate the slope. But I want to show you an instructive way also how to do this without differential uh, calculus and uh, I think you learn a lot about also algebra and uh, geometry by that. So what we want to do, uh, as I said, uh, we want to first uh, maybe draw a parabola. Yeah, so um, here's our coordinate system. Here is uh, x and y. And uh, then we draw a parabola. For that we can maybe use another color, for example uh, blue. This is just a general one yeah, um, without given any specific uh, constants. And then what we do, we choose a specific point, for example here, at the position x bar. Let's call it just x bar. We could also call it x prime or any, any other value. And uh, then, of course, what we have to also draw is a, is a tangent through that point, uh, like that, for example. And then we could easily define the slope of this tangent according to uh, delta y over delta x. Yeah? And the slope of that tangent at this position x bar where it hits the or where it intersects the graph, this slope must be then identical to the slope of the parab parabola at that position. Yeah? So uh, in order to show how this works now, I mean this is already everything what we need in principle to do that, but I will go now through the solution step by step to show how uh, how you can obtain the correct formula at the end. So uh, what we have to do first, we have to um, we have to of course define the function for our parabola. Yeah, if we want to have an analytic solution, and uh, this is of course given as uh, in the general form y of x equal to a x square plus b x plus uh, c. Yeah, and uh, then of course. Similar to, to the parabola function, we also need a function for our tangent. Um, and there we can write, for example, t of x, uh, m times x, slope times x, plus the intersection parameter. Uh, let's call that not b, because b is already used here, so maybe we can call that simply n. Okay. Now, um, yeah, now we have everything what we need to directly uh, start with that. So what we will do now, we will, uh, we will equate these uh, two functions, t of x and uh, y of x. Yeah. So what what we can do now here, we can write um, at the position, uh, at the position uh, x bar, of course, as I said before. So now we can write here uh, a x bar square plus b x bar plus c, and this is then equal to m x uh, bar plus n. Yeah. So here nothing happens except equating these two. Okay, and now we do some algebraic transformation actually. Yeah? So the first thing which we will do now, we will bring this part here to the other side. Yeah. So for example here, we can uh, show it in such a way. And then we can write here um, ax bar square plus bx bar plus c minus mx bar minus n and this then has to be of course equal to zero. Yeah and then what we can do in the next step we want to use PQ formula for solving that. So in order to do that we divide this whole equation here by a. So um, of course here in the beginning it vanishes. Yeah? So what we can write now x bar square plus uh, these two uh, parts of that sum we can actually um, we can combine. Yeah? So what we can write here now is b 
minus m divided by a and then x bar. And the similar thing we can also do with c and n. So we can write here c minus n divided by a equal to zero. Yeah? On the right side, nothing changes actually. Okay, uh, this is already uh, one step that we, that we have done and which is important. And we get one equation here from that. And this is we will use later again. So maybe in this case, um, so maybe in this case, I would like to, uh, to call that uh, equation number uh, number one. Okay, and now uh, maybe we can create a new page. And uh, then what we will actually use, we will use now PQ formula to solve that. Yeah? And uh, then we can identify this here, of course, as, um, as uh, P. And this here would be our Q yeah? in combination with this plus, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so what now we can do on the next step, we can uh, then write, um, I will directly give the solution now, um, x, y and 2 is equal to minus p, which means minus b minus m divided by 2a plus minus, and then we can give here our square root, b minus m divided by a, 4a squared, because we have to write here p squared, uh, minus c minus n divided by a. Okay. So this is now our solution, um, but this has uh, this this always gives because we have a quadratic equation here. Uh, it this always gives two solutions. Yeah? But we know that this tangent has to intersect the graph exactly in one point, and this is the trick that we actually have to use in this case, uh, because we have to now, in order to get one solution, we have to assume that this part here. Uh, the square root part is actually equal to zero, which means this place here inside the square root must vanish. So what we can write now here is actually uh, b minus m squared divided by 4a squared minus c minus n divided by a equal to zero. And this is then our equation number two. Yeah? So now we have two equations, the one which we have defined before, this number one here, which is a quadratic equation. And here we have another one, which is uh, actually, or which does not contain any x at all. So now we can uh, now write down this equation, this system of equations. Yeah? So we take the first one again, uh, which I have uh, mentioned before, yeah? which is actually given as x bar square plus b minus m divided by a x bar plus c minus n divided by a equal to zero. And the second one was here b minus m squared divided by 4a squared minus c minus n divided by a equal to zero. And uh, yeah, what we can do, um, we see now if we I mean, there are many possibilities how to solve that, but the easiest one is just to add the second one to the first one, yeah? because then, as you can see, this part here, um, this part here actually vanishes. Yeah? So maybe we can go again to a, to a new page. And uh, yeah, when we add these two up, then we receive at a result, as a result, x bar square plus b minus m divided by a, x bar plus b minus m divided by 4a square, and this should be also squared, uh, and this is equal to zero. So one of the few tricks which we have to actually uh, use now in this uh, whole derivation, uh, we have to apply now here. Yeah? So this is, uh, if you take a closer look at this, you will come to the conclusion that this is actually uh, what comes out when you solve a binomial formula. Yeah? So this we have to now use the first binomial formula, but reversely. Yeah? And if you do that, then it turns out that this is actually x bar plus b minus m divided by 2a squared equal to zero. Yeah? And uh, this makes it very easy. 
Yeah, this is the easiest way how to solve that. Of course, you could also use again PQ formula to do that, but this is uh, uh, too tricky in this case. This makes it a little bit easier. So what we have now um, here is a, a just um, yeah, simple quadratic equation. So now in this case, we don't have any additional constant, which means we can directly calculate the square root here in this case. And uh, when we do that, then uh, we get at the end as a result x bar plus two min uh, plus plus b minus m divided by two a equal to zero. Now we can multiply this with two a, and this then leads to the result two a x bar plus m minus uh, plus b minus m equal to zero and now we can at the end also add m or m here and uh, this to to bring m on the other side and this then gives a formula for m which is given as 2ax bar plus b now and now uh, this looks uh, maybe familiar if you have an, if you know differential calculus how to do that then uh, you can actually show that the results are absolutely identical yeah, and this we can do maybe here uh, so you know that the slope can also be calculated with the using derivative of um, y with respect to x at the position x equal to x bar and this is when you calculate this um, maybe we can go back to our original um, our original equation ax square would give a 2ax bar and here this x vanishes which means only b remains and c is completely uh, going away which means the result would be 2ax bar plus b and you can see that uh, when you compare these two uh, results they are actually identical yeah so this is one possibility how you can calculate the slope of a parabola without using differential calculus which is of course more complicated uh, but I think it's very instructive to to do this once. And uh, according to my knowledge, this also only works with parabolas because otherwise um, you have more uh, unknown parameters, uh, which does not allow you to calculate the slope without using any additional tricks. But this is uh, the way how it's actually working. And I hope you also found it interesting. I hope that uh, if you like the video, you like, you click the like button, you subscribe my channel yeah, if you want to see further videos and if you have not done so far. And yeah, hopefully see you soon, maybe for a new physics video.